Huawei's MateBook X Pro. It's their top of the line business orientated laptop that has been upgraded and this is the 2023 model. So it's now powered by 13th gen Intel. It has the Core i7 1360p with 12 cores, 16 threads, Iris XE graphics. And this model that I was sent out is the lower configuration of it. So with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, one terabyte SSD, but there are other models with 13 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes for your SSD. It runs Windows 11 Pro and the screen, it's 14.2 inches. It's a touch screen, three by two aspect ratio, IPS, 500 nits maximum brightness. And we've got a backlit keyboard, 60 watt hour battery and Thunderbolt 4 support with this model. This is what you'll find in the box. We've got a type C to type A adapter. You guessed why we need this because there's no type A ports on it, unfortunately. Our supercharger, so this is 90 watts and then a type C to type C cable. So the model I got sent out here to review from Huawei is the ink blue version. So this coating over the top of it, it's micro arc oxidation coating and what I like about it the best is it does not pick up fingerprints nothing so it's a matte finish looks really good now you can lift up and open this lid here with just one hand like so and we've got our keyboard here so travels about 1.6 millimeters off the top of my head good keyboard so just like the previous models it is backlit too as well and this keyboard I find it really comfortable to type on and I just demonstrate now the backlighting which is the F3 key here too by the way so this is now on the most powerful setting so it's two stage or just off which is reasonably bright. I'm not doing it justice here. It looks a lot better in person. I've got a little bit of ambient light coming in, but it's very good. The backlighting on here automatically does time out too, by the way. So we do have Huawei sound with it and it's got six speakers in total. There'll be a sample of what it sounds like later on in the video, but the Palm Rest here still using that same coating there. So it does feel really good. Power button, I love that it's separated away from the keyboard so you don't accidentally touch it. It's never happened to me so far in about the week or so I've been using it. And we've got a fingerprint reader here incorporated into this power button. So you can use that with Windows Hello and also with the front facing 720p webcam. So the touchpad, nice smooth glass like finish to it. Really nice and large too. I like the way they've extended it right down to the front here. And I find it one of the best touchpads that I have used in a long time. I don't need to go and plug in a mouse. It's accurate. And when you move the cursor about, it goes where you want. It doesn't skip or jump around either. So very nice keyboard, touchpad, everything here is absolutely top notch. It's a slim laptop too, so only 15.6 millimeters with the model I've got here, and it's 1.2 kilos, so light. Now on the right hand side, we have two Type-C ports here. Now these are USB 3.2 Gen 1s, but we do have the two Thunderbolt 4 ports here on the right side, and they did not do away, thankfully, with our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. So you see just here, there's a vent, so that's for the cooling, Either side does have those vents and notice that there's no vents on the bottom here. I do like this look. It keeps it very elegant looking, I think, and more streamlined. And again, we still have that same coating. So it's metal build to it, but that weight being really quite nice and light at the only 1.26 kilos. So the hot air was blowing out the back here. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show you the internals with these loan units. Can't open them up but we cannot upgrade the RAM. The only thing you would be able to change is the SSD. The MateBook X Pro does have four microphones. You can see them here at the front. So the six speakers, Huawei sound, and these four mics. MateBook X Pro webcam sample. So it's a good webcam, but it's HD. It's not full HD, unfortunately. Now through the software, if you go into their PC manager, you find camera, you can choose a virtual background. So you can see I've selected like this very nice looking office here with a bit of a view. You can change this over. It does affect the frame rate a little bit. You can just blur the background if you want to. I can make it out that look, hey everyone, I'm on holiday, I'm at the beach here. And I like the fact that this has a bit of movement to it. It's got the animation. Now the microphones, they are the four at the front that you're listening to. So good mics, good quality here. And overall, not bad. I do like these virtual backgrounds. I think they're really cool. And there is a better look at the exhaust vent. So all the hot air will be pushed out the back here and here. So by default, it's 28 watts. But if you use the function shortcut and put it into the performance mode, it will increase the power limit then up to 30 watts to boost 
the performance, but only marginally. So the screen is touch, it's fully laminated, IPS panel, and it's 14.2 inches, three by two aspect ratio, and this is the furthest it goes back. Not exactly amazing, some other brands, you can lie the screen down completely flat there, but I think for most users, this is not really gonna be an issue. If you're sitting on a table using it, then you're going to be able to get your optimum angle that you need anyway, so that's not really a big issue. And because it doesn't have stylus support, you probably don't need to lie the screen flat anyway, but it's nice sometimes to be able to do that, especially if you've got the laptop in front of, say, another monitor. I often wanna push the screen right down. So touch support is 12 touch points, and I find the accuracy to be absolutely fine. Our resolution is 3120 by 2080 and it's a 60 hertz or 90 hertz panel. So when you run it at 90 hertz, you do see the difference. It's a lot smoother. We've got 1500 to one contrast ratio and 500 nits is their claim for maximum brightness, but I've measured uh, close to about 440 nits. PPI 264, so you, you don't see pixels, it's very sharp. The color coverage here, well, 100% of sRGB, NTSC is 87%, Adobe RGB is 89%, and P3 is 97%. So it is a fantastic panel. I do like it, I like the slim bezels, the fact that it's fully laminated, brightness is good. But I would like to see in future models, this is just me, it's not a nitpick, it's just a suggestion, OLED screens I think is the next step after using a lot of OLED laptops recently. So for our audio, the speakers, Huawei Sound, there's six of them and very good considering how slim this is. It's only about 15 millimeters, but it's packing some very decent speakers. So I'll give you a sample. This is gonna be a little bit different this time around because I'm gonna play here the Huawei Watch 4 Pro. Just reviewed it, but you'll be able to hear what it sounds like, me talking with my video through these speakers. I think it's excellent. They're very rich sounding speakers, good little bit of bass to them, very good volume. So raised to wake, as you can see, that is working well. And I do think it's a great looking watch on my wrist here. And I do like these new watch faces they have gone with. These are called the Planet Quest watch faces. So you get information on... The MateBook X Pro 2023 edition is running Windows 11 Pro. We have the Core i7-1360P. Now this has 12 cores, 16 threads, maximum turbos, 5 gigahertz, and it's a 28 watt part. Iris XE graphics, and it is the 96 executional unit. So it's very potent. Everything I do within Windows is very quick and snappy. I don't see any lags at all. So a couple of areas that they have improved upon from the previous model last year, or should I say the previous two models they did release last year, uh, is the RAM speed. So I'll just show you that right here, that before they were using slightly slower RAM. Now we're at 5,600 megahertz. This is good to see. So we're getting, uh, definitely that's gonna aid uh, the performance of especially the Iris XE graphics. And the other is the SSDs. So I criticized them on the last models of using PCIe 3 SSDs uh, instead of PCIe 4.0 SSDs, which they are finally using now. So we've got a boost in our performance here, mostly the sequential reads and writes, uh, but it's still not the fastest in terms of PCIe 4.0. We could have 7,500 reads and writes, sequential speeds there, but we're getting around about the 5,000 mark. Still, that's a welcomed increase from what we had before, which was about 3,000, 3,500. So that's two areas, key improvements there in the performance. So built-in software, we have their PC manager, very handy software. Now they do push out updates. So if you go into the uh, optimization tab, you'll see here we've got performance modes. You've got the power mode here, increasing the power limit or balanced. So being in performance, the fan noise, you'll hear it a little bit more, but you get a boost in performance. And when you do go into this menu, I highly recommend you run this. So drivers, I've already done it. There was a BIOS update, a few other driver updates. So they're all in this one little hub here, which is great. Now there's software you can connect up with your other devices. You've got Huawei Share. You can share the screens, say from your mobile phone, your Huawei P60 Pro on uh, the laptop here itself, which is very handy. Drag and drop your files. There's also other bits and pieces you can do. So it's handy. There's no like bloatware. There's no McAfee that they have included either, which is very good. Other brands should take note on that, definitely. So those speeds are good, but what about our benchmarks? So there is a boost in benchmarks performance now going 13th gen, a little bit better than what we had with the 12th gen. 
So the single core score there for Geekbench 6, big improvement. Multi-core score as well, very good. Uh, so it's got plenty of power. And as I mentioned, it's, everything's just really snappy and quick when I use this laptop, impressed with the performance. And here is OpenCL with Geekbench 6. Now you can run this. It's a free benchmark on your own existing hardware to see what kind of improvements you're going to gain. Uh, and Night Raid, so this is a 3D Mark score here. So testing out the Iris XE graphics, you'll see that it's a good score. Aided by the fact we have the faster RAM speeds this time around, so slightly better than the previous models. And Time Spy, again, if you wanted to run this, you could yourself and check out this compared to what you're using now for your current hardware. But very potent. Uh, it would be nice if we had a dedicated graphics option and the 32 gigabyte RAM option would be another great thing to have. So the last benchmark is Cinebench. So yes, I did run this for the full time. So it stresses it out for 10 minutes. Uh, you hear the fan when you do that. And we've got a score just over 10,000. If you run it just once, it's about 11 or 12,000 points, but it does drop down as the thermals increase. It throttles a little bit. And the single core score that you can see is... Very good. So really fast with that five gigahertz maximum turbo out of this uh, particular chipset here. So video decoding, if you're wanting to play some really demanding video files, well, this is one here that I always test out. So it's 10-bit HEVC, 140 megabits per second. Let's run it. Okay, it stutters in the beginning. This is a bug with Windows I've noticed with Iris XE graphics, it seems to do it. It's dropping frames a little bit. And yes, I'm running off the power too. You can see how it's still doing that stuttering. Seems to settle down once it's running, once I get rid of that transparent kind of menu that's popping up. Now, if you do install the codec pack and you get the classic media player, it doesn't seem to affect it. But this is what is built in just running from stock here. So again, a few drop frames at the start. It's smoothing out a little bit, but video playback performance here a little bit disappointing but it seems to be an issue with the iris xe graphics and windows 11 i noticed with the amd machines i'm reviewing say with the 680m or the 780m it's completely flawless no dropped frames at all but here it does it then what about streaming decoding youtube 4k 60 is what i'll test out here and before i get into it i wanted to comment about the touchpad i think it's fantastic i don't feel the need to go for a mouse I'm more of a mouse person, but this touchpad is absolutely brilliant. I love how accurate it is, smooth, moving about. It's just very good. One of the best. So this is the demo. Check out. And okay, that's already in 4K. And I'll enable those stats there. So there we go. Uh, nine drop frames, 10, but then it shouldn't really drop anymore. But for some reason, it's dropped a couple. But now that's stabilized. The same sort of thing starts out... Okay, drop in just a couple. You never notice it anyway when it's 60 frames per second. And that's smooth. So very good playback decoding VP9 codec that it's using with Chrome and YouTube. And if you decided you wanted to edit a 4K video on this hardware, well, you can, thanks to the RS XE graphics. But nothing too demanding, okay? So this timeline here, the files I'm using are 100 megabit per second 4K. And the playback and the timeline speed is very good. Iris XE can handle this, so that is fine. But what I'll test out now is how long will it take to export one minute of footage at the YouTube preset. Okay, so that is all set, the one minute of footage and the YouTube preset. Now I wanna make sure I'm in the performance mode. It's plugged in, of course, so function P. No, not balanced, but yes, performance mode. I imagine that this is going to be very quick and around about 25 seconds or so is my guess. It could be wrong. You can see that steaming ahead. It is going to be quick. I'll skip ahead to the end result. Okay, finishing up now. A little slower than I thought. So approximately 29 seconds there isn't the fastest using the same clip across other hardware. The best I've seen is around about 24, 23 seconds, but still very good speeds for encoding 4K video here with Adobe Premiere Pro. So thermals and throttling, when you do push it really hard, like Cinebench R23 that I'm currently running, you will see that it does get up to 95 degrees Celsius. It triggers thermal throttling, it lowers the clocks down a little bit. And I'm seeing this with a lot of Intel laptops, especially as thin as ones like this. Now the fan noise is pretty good. You do hear it 
Uh, it's not an offensive kind of noise. It's just a, a whooshing noise. So here's a sample of it under full load with Cinebench R23. Then finally, Linux support. So if you're wondering if it's working, yes, I have Linux Manjaro with the open source drivers running everything. Wireless connected up, audio does seem to be working. Uh, the only thing is the touch accuracy is off. So where I touch on the screen, it's miles off. I don't know why that is. It's literally about always about five centimeters to the left of where I touch. So that's just something you need to sort out with the drivers and hopefully that can be corrected. But it's looking promising for Linux support with the MateBook X Pro. Our battery life on this model here is not amazing. It's a 60 watt hour battery. We're packing some powerful hardware in here. So when you do unplug it, you cannot get that performance mode. So you don't get the, the boost there. It goes into the balance mode. I set the brightness to 30% here with Windows, which may not seem enough, but for indoor use it is. And it's not at 90 Hertz either the screen then, it's at the 60 Hertz and I get six to seven hours. I don't find that to be amazing at all. It's okay. It will probably work for most people, but you really do need to baby um, the battery here because if you do anything slightly demanding, that battery life really drops down to then about four or five hours. I hope that with future revisions of this model, maybe next year's release, Huawei can figure out a way to try and cram in and fit in there just a slightly larger battery, like a 70 watt hour, maybe even larger than that, and 80 would be absolutely perfect. Now I cannot fault this model here when it comes to the keyboard, the touchpad, the build quality is absolutely superb. It's so good, I love that finish. Resists fingerprints really well. Speakers on this, they sound fantastic. And then typing on that backlit keyboard is really good. The screen, the 14.2 inches, three by two aspect ratio, very practical, good decision there, I think from Huawei for a business laptop. And the touch accuracy is good. I do like that there. And this is the furthest it will go back the hinge of the screen. I wish it was a little more, but hey, that's not bad. And I would love to see optional models maybe next year with OLED. An OLED screen would be great. That would be a big thumbs up from me. And even one with a optional dedicated GPU. I mean, the Iris XE graphics is good and the 14th gen is probably gonna be even better, maybe even better than the 780M from AMD. But it would be nice to see that. Uh, just to more options with this would be really good. Now the Type-C ports, you get the Thunderbolt 4 on this, you get the two other Type-C ports. I would love to have seen a Type-A. You have to carry around an adapter or, or a dongle, but that's just the way it is. So all up, it is a very classy, business-focused laptop here. Really good, plenty of power, amazing speed. The real weaknesses are just the battery life, not amazing, no Type-A port on this, and yeah, you probably guessed it, it is expensive. Sure, the quality is absolutely amazing. It's a little pricey. I hope that Huawei can just work on notching that down a little bit because it's, at the time of this video, over 2,000 euros is what it's going to be selling for, which is, uh, I think it's, it's a little bit of an ask there. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the 2023 model of the MacBook X Pro.